I'm going to show you how to set up an amortization schedule for a bonds purchased at a premium. And we'll do it in terms of a bonds payable. So what are we talking about here? Say, for example, we have a bond here with a face value of $100,000. And it has uh, semi-annual interest payments here. Now, we purchased this uh, bond here for $104,000. So comparing that to its uh, face value, uh, we come up here with a difference of $4,100, and that would be its premium amount. Now we take this uh, premium here, which uh, represents an interest expense for that bond, and uh, we record it here as a uh, premium or uh, to the bonds payable, and we have to amortize or we have to uh, allocate the interest expense on that premium. Um, to our interest expense here and we also have an interest payable amount here which is those semi-annual payments that we have to pay on that bond. So we're going to look at both uh, how we amortize that premium and on that bonds payable and also the interest payable on that and how it's allocated to the interest expense over here. And we'll do that by setting up this amortization schedule. Okay, showing here is an amortization schedule for a bond purchased at a premium. And I have it laid out here in table form where I've got the columns referenced up above and then a simple explanation here for the calculation of each of these columns or uh, values that we have to calculate for this, this bond. And then over here, I got the payment dates or the periods and that it, we've got 10 of them here, which was a five-year bond with semi-annual payments. So we have 10 payments here. And what we have to concentrate on here is this interest expense that we have to recognize for this bond and also the amortization of this bond premium. So let's look, go through the, here in this example where we, we have a $100,000 face value of a bond and we purchased, purchased it for $104,100. So if you take the difference between these two uh, amounts, you're going to get a balance here in the bond premium of $4,100. Now, Looking over here at our interest payment, this is our regular interest payment that we that's included in that bond. Uh, it's forty-five hundred dollars. Now that's based on a stated rate of interest of nine percent. That's what it states in the bond when it was issued. So to determine that amount, uh, the forty-five hundred dollar amount here, we would take uh, a nine percent times the one hundred thousand dollars here and we'd get uh, $9,000. But since it's semi-annual payments, we divide it by two, so we get $4,500. Now, to recognize our interest expense each period on that uh, uh, bond. Now, this here, we use the market interest rate. Now, that's what this bond is selling for in the market. So, it w so let's say it was 8% here. So our interest expense for each period would be based on 8% divided by 2 or 4%. So to calculate that, we take the beginning balance in that bond. In this case, it was $104,100. $104, we take that times 4%, and we get our interest expense for the period. Now, the amortization of that uh, um, bond premium is the difference here between the interest that we paid, that, that regular payment, minus the interest expense that we recognize for the period. And that was $336 in this case. Now we take that amount here, um, this bond amortization and this bond premium, and we subtract that from its beginning balance at the beginning of the year, and then we get the balance in the bond premium. We also take that amortization of that bond premium, and we would, in this case, subtract it here from the book value of the uh, bond, and it would reduce the book value in the bond by the amount of that amortization amount. Now, we repeat the same thing here for each of the next uh, periods. So in this case, we'd, again, we'd have that $4,500 payment, uh, that regular payment would, at the 9% uh, stated interest rate per year, which is 4.5% per period. And then we would calculate, calculate the interest expense here again. And that would be based on the 8% market in interest rate, or 4% for the period. And we would take that times its beginning balance. In this case, it was $103,764 for the beginning of that period. Again, we go back here and we take the difference between the uh, interest expense recognized versus that interest payment we made. 
and there's where we get our bond amortization. And then, of course, go back here and we reduce that bond premium amount by the uh, amortization of that bond and we come up with our new balance here in the bond premium. Do the same thing here to the book value of the bond and that we would subtract out that uh, amortization of the bond and it, well, it would reduce the book value of the bond by that amount. Now, after we go through all these periods here, uh, we would recognize an interest payment of 40, our total payments here, $45,000 on our regular interest payment. And then we would recognize uh, $40,963. And that would be on our income statement as the recognized interest expense here. Now, the amortization, uh, the total amount of amortization we add up here would be $4,000. $35. So you fact that add that to the interest expense that we recognized uh, as part of the um, uh, market rate here, we, we would get up uh, get the total here of the interest payable of $45,000. And if we go back over here and look at our balance here in our bonds premium, uh, we come down to roughly a zero. Or we should come down to a zero amount. And at the same time, the book value of the bond decreases here to its uh, face value. And so everything is in balance here. So we decreased the balance in the bond premium here by the amount of amortization that we recognized. And we also decreased the book value of the uh, bond here by that am amortization of that premium. So at the end here, we got a balance. This is what we have to pay on that uh, bonds payable here and we did that by amortizing that bond.